Teaching Development in Malmö at OF. And as Lena said, I defended my thesis in packaging logistics about a month ago uh, at Lund University. And it was focused on sustainable packaging, and that's the theme of my lecture today. I would like us to start in, the, in our morning. So, hands up all of you who had breakfast this morning. <laughs> Great, that's a good start. <laughs> um, I would like for you to close your eyes and return to that breakfast table this morning. You're not all closing your eyes. <laughs> Return to the breakfast table, look around on that table. What do you have there? I bet that those of you who had breakfast, you met and handled a whole bunch of different packages, already there in the morning. You may look again. <laughs> <laughs> and this silence pre silent presence of packages in our everyday lives at home, at work, is one of the reasons as to why packaging caught my interest. The other reason is its claimed and indicated potential to actually contribute to a more sustainable society. From a packaging logistics perspective, from which I have conducted my research, a package is not just a package. It's an integrated system of different levels, with a primary package, the one that we recognize as a consumer package, the one we bring home from the store. We have the secondary packaging, or retail packaging, that we see sometimes in the retail stores, the trays, the wraparounds, and we have the tertiary packaging, transport packaging, like here on the picture, the Euro pallet, or the roll container that uh, the milk comes in. All these levels of packaging interact with each other and with the product inside. This means that changing one of these levels will affect the others. And by increasing the strength in, for instance, the primary package, the secondary package doesn't have to be as strong to still keep the total strength of the packaging solution. <coughs> as consumers, we rarely perceive these different levels of packaging. <coughs> we at best maybe recognize the primary package. But we can return to that breakfast table again in our minds. And I bet that you, as well as I, would say, would you please pass me the milk? And we rarely expect people to just pass us the milk. <laughs> we expect them to pass the package with milk inside. As consumers, we hardly notice the package at all until it's empty. Or when it fails to live up to our expectations. It's hard to open, it's leaking. We've all been there. <laughs> More or less only noticing packaging when it fails or when it's empty. It's really no wonder why packaging is to a large extent regarded as a necessary evil as something that ought to be removed. I have a question for you. Would you prefer a life without packaging? <laughs> and I would like you to, to grab your cell phones and... Now we have a test on the technology here. And so grab your phones, you go to the side, uh, side go bolt, Oh, 
You go to the site govote.at and you enter the code 667502. Anyone here saying yes? <laughs> <laughs> Rebels. <laughs> <laughs> Give you the link later. There is a trend today uh, aiming towards uh, environmentally aware consumers, uh, like the store in Berlin, uh, Unpacked. They claim to be zero waste stores uh, with no packaging. I would like to challenge them say that they are not without packaging. They have packages. Uh, the crates here are clearly secondary packages, retail packages. And I bet those bananas didn't come in loose weight in the boats and in the trucks. <coughs> they came in some kind of packaging. And here the woman is filling a package, a consumer package, with product. So, um, and it's interesting to notice in these stores that the primary package here is, is not optimized, neither for the actual volume that the customer is filling it with, nor is it optimized for the actual product that influences the shelf life of the product when the consumer brings it home. So I would rather say that, yeah, it's quite a lot of packages as well. As a researcher, I like to put things into perspective. 
and uh, packaging. It's really nothing new. For in the ancient Greeks, they also had packaging, and that's 3,500 years ago. They had amphoras for transporting, handling, and storing wine, olive oil, and other processed food products. Those packages lasted for about 2,000 years. They were uh, optimized for sea transportation, for handling, and even had tamper-evident closures. And they communicated information about the product producer and the product. So my next question to you is, why do we need packaging today? So, grab your phones. mode is really not <coughs> great when swapping. Jag tror jag. Hygien. Jag tror det. Hygien, hygien. Mm. Vad heter hygien på engelska? Hygien. Vad heter så? Samma som i svenska. Okej. Stavringen. Nu hoppar den dit. Du hoppar hela tiden. Hygien. Hygiene, skriver hygiene. Vem är det där? Brilliant. You know a lot about packaging. It's really interesting to see. Protection is clearly in focus here. As well as transport uh, and storage. In my research, I uh, looked at literature and from that extracted and uh, three functions of packaging, to protect, to facilitate handling, and to communicate as the main functions of packaging, and also the main reasons as to why we need packaging today and for 3,500 years ago as well. These functions can, through uh, different features, I identified in my research 19 different features, um, contribute to sustainable development. And I will give some examples of how, uh, how that can be done. As you noticed yourself, 
protection of the product is very important. And it's interesting to notice that even increasing the amount of packaging material can be the most environmental and economic way to go in some cases. In this sense, the environmental impact of the packaging material is in general very small if you look at the product and packaging together. The, this is an example that I like where it comes clear the role of the package very much. An unpacked cucumber lasts about three days um, before it evaporates too much and gets stolen. We throw it away. And with a package that protects the product, the shelf life can increase up to 14 days. This means that the cucumber actually has a fair <coughs> chance of getting sold and getting eaten instead of thrown away. This is unfortunately no rare sight. Here the secondary packages has not withstand the conditions during transportation. This means a lot of products getting wasted, uh, unsatisfied uh, customers, and a lot of resources, money, and energy get wasted. So providing sufficient protection of the product uh, provide environmental as well as economic gains. And packaging has an opportunity mm -hmm. as well to facilitate the handling. You mentioned the transportation, for instance, but also uh, in our homes it can facilitate the handling and contribute to, um, in this case, to less food waste. In Sweden, we have 38% uh, single households, 70% is one or two person household. That's a large share. So it's important to adjust the amount of product in the packages so that we have a fair chance of consuming the product before it's no longer possible to consume. And this is called apportionment. In this terminology. This is another example where the package through the fill rate can contribute to more efficient transportation. Some of you have probably seen the example before. It's the tea lights from IKEA, Lima, where they made a change in the primary package from the bag with random placed candles to the stacked one. It can seem like a small change in the packaging solution, but it made a great impact. They saved 200 trucks a year, uh, a reduction of CO2 emission with 21%. And this new packaging solution also made the uh, handling in the store much more efficient. They save 186 working days a year in retail. On this little change, but then again, it's a high volume product, so that's why it's getting so large impact. Fill rate, it is important in inbound transportation as well as outbound transportation. However, there are limits. <laughs> Packaging can also be used to communicate. Today, as well as the Amphoras communicating about the packaging and, of course, the product. I have one example here of a package that communicates a clear sustainability related message. But it can be uh, a message conveying how to open the package without spilling it or ruining it, how to handle it, how to store it, how to use the product, or even coming up with ideas of how to use it when it's maybe closing up to the end where it cannot be used anymore.
So it can inspire us and instruct us in many different ways. And some work is done on the patching, but much more could be done. And this is not only for the primary package or consumer package, but for all levels of packaging. Like the secondary brown boxes, the communication there can facilitate for the storage personnel so they don't pick the wrong package when they're supposed to ship away. This picture I like, it says a lot about packaging. It's quite multifaceted. There is a lot of, a lot of aspects to consider where sustainability is one among many. And it can be challenging to get a holistic view of packaging, to grasp every aspect. So I would say that a lot of the secret behind um, approaching sustain, a more sustainable packaging lays in regarding packaging as an enabler. It protects the product so it reaches the destination undamaged, safe and clean. It can facilitate the handling of the product from filling all the way to consumption. And it can communicate throughout the entire value chain. And it's in these functions among the whole value chain that we can find the many possibilities in how to approach more sustainable packaging. When it comes to development of sustainable packaging, it's important to begin with the end in mind. So already here in the concept phase in the product development, one has to think about the package in the end. What do we want the customer to experience? How should it feel to open the package? And <coughs> How is it going to be sold? How is it going to be stored? Is it optimized for the transportation? Is it optimized for the filling process? And so forth. To have the whole picture already here when you design the product. To not miss out on any important aspect. So, in my research, in my empirical research, I have basically three parts. One, uh, here, I looked at the organic standards, looking at what packaging requirements are included in these. And I looked at consumers, I did a survey among consumers in Sweden, how do they perceive and value sustainable packaging? and packaging in general as well. And uh, interview study among brand owners, 20 brand owners in Sweden, uh, ranging from small companies to very, very large companies, looking at how do they select or develop their packages for their food products. But before we enter into the results of these, I would like for you to uh, respond to some more questions. So grab your phones and how important is sustainable packaging for you? <laughs> and we 
grab that next question. How much ex extra would you be willing to pay for a sustainable package if the product cost 15 Swedish kronas? Results from the research. Eighty percent of the consumers in my consumer survey. environmental profile of the packaging when they selected the products. To what extent, that of course varied between the consumers, but still it indicates that the environmental profile is something that many consumers bear with them in their minds, even when they go shopping. But that is not to say that every purchase they make is in line with their environmental preferences when it comes to packaging. There are a lot of aspects aspects that influence its consumers in the choice of food products. And looking at the willingness to pay, you are pretty much like the this group here, but in total 86% uh, claim to be willing to pay more for sustainable packaging. And for a product costing 15 Swedish kronas in general, uh, people were willing to pay one pound or more, and consumers regarding themselves as frequent consumers of organic food, quite aware consumers, were willing to pay some extra, in line with what you uh, said. If we look at consumer perceptions, uh, when it comes to what is environmentally sustainable packaging. We can clearly see that consumers relate that very strongly to the packaging material. What kind of material, how much material, and if they perceive it as recyclable. And when it comes to material, we can clearly see that the consumers prefer or regard paper-based packaging as environmentally sound, and plastic and metal not. But this is consumer perceptions. This is not to say that this is the truth in all the cases. But. So how about the packaging then? Organic food uh, packaging is used to communicate the organic value to the consumers. But how about the package? So I looked at the organic standard uh, behind the EU label and COP, and it, when it comes to the re regulations behind the EU label, there are no regulations when it comes to the environmental profile of the package. Uh, when it comes to COP, they have a new regulation since uh, 1st of January 2015 that aim to uh, align the values of the product with the packaging. So they have increased their amount of regulations when it comes to the sustainability profile of the packaging. And the new regulations there focus on resource efficient packaging and avoidance of harmful substances and materials in the packaging. Looking at the brand owners, My research among them shows that many of them feel to have a limited ability to influence the sustainability profile of their packaging. Um, 
Many brand owners state that the packaging selection and development is much in the hands of their suppliers. This can be a reason as to why 67% of the brand owners make no difference when it comes to packaging of organic food in contrast to the conventional food products. Thus, I would say that there is a business potential for companies who want to um, profile themselves when it comes to sustainable packaging and especially within the organic So, <clears throat> if you get one shot to remake a package, which one would you select? If you have one package that makes you angry, <laughs> grab your phones. I don't know if it's possible to skip one question. Did you get to Sorry, I had one. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought to skip that one, but maybe it's not possible in the system. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. I'm lost. Oh. It's interesting to note that glass is quite strong here, as opposed to in paper as well. Apart <laughs> from the from the strong answers uh, on glass, they're somewhat coast coin are similar to the results that I got in my in my survey. So it's quite nice to see. Uh, if you had one shot remaking a package, which one would it be?
The plastic fruit bags. Anyone of you who like to share your thoughts and ideas on how to remake it? Or why to remake them? There's no right or wrong. Just interested in your ideas. put it that because of the general problem with plastics and uh, yeah. the spreading of plastics in the nature. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, I, I in general think, wouldn't it be possible to take like my own bag to the shop to put the fr fruit in? But I mean, that's not remaking the package mm -hmm. by itself, but I sometimes think instead of taking a new bag for, yeah, because I want to I'm open for ideas <laughs> and your thoughts around packaging. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah, so I would, I would make my own, uh, or I have actually my own bags. So. Do I have plastic? No. <laughs> How do you pay with really it? Take it so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the, then you have it loose on the band mm -hmm. first. So, which is of course handling it more and maybe it can be mixed. <laughs> Anyone else would like to share their thoughts and ideas behind the answers? Yes. I think the most annoying packages are the if you want to buy um, organic pears or apples and they're packaged uh, like four on a plastic tray kind of with cling film over it. It's that's the worst package. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it just, it make me really annoyed. Why? Why is it the worst? It's also because if, it's, if one of them goes bad. It yeah. will throw away the whole thing. Yeah, and you see, you see the the conventional apples lying there in a big pile, which I think is a lot less packaged because even if they had some secondary package or whatever you call it during the transport, they don't have that consumer package. So I guess that would reduce the total amount of packaging and the total amount of plastics used. Definitely. And then the organic ones are supposed to be like environmentally friendly and they're lying there on this plastic tray and it just feels contradictory and makes me annoyed. Have you thought of how many of those conventional apples that you throw away in retail because they get bad lying in this huge pile in the bottom with all the heavy apples on top of it? Yeah, all the still, consumers... Then, then you throw away just the bad ones. If yes. one of the ones in the tray goes bad, you will throw away the, the good ones as well. And that's strange. That's I strange, I agree. But the problem is, in retail, we use a lot of fruit and vegetables because of, uh, they're not uh, handled as carefully as they ought to be. They uh, Sometimes I can get really sad when I go to retail store where we go shopping and they just turn the whole package upside down and let the apples roll around and they get bruised. And we don't pick the bruised apples when we go shopping. We pick the nicest ones and we twist and turn and we squeeze them a bit. The avocado, we squeeze them and we squeeze them all of us. We want the best ones and we leave 20 of them squeezed. <laughs> for the next pal who's going to shop. It's a lot of food waste there. And the packages are one way to try to reduce that. It's not optimal, uh, but it's, it's one way. I would be happy to figure out a good way of, of uh, compromising there, keeping the amount of packaging material and keeping the food safe and, and protected. But it's, it's tough. So how do you make trays like that in, from paper or from lace paper or something? It doesn't have to be plastic. Yeah, definitely. Uh, because I agree with you that 
But I, I usually take them to the cashier and say, I'll buy this and take away that, and they give me a reduction. Mm -hmm. So it's a way of bargaining when I buy it. But, but, I mean, there could be other materials. Yes, definitely. I agree. Compostable. Yeah, I agree. So, it's one, two, and I'm going to end there, and I will. Yes. So, we thank you enough.